Well, when last we spoke, um, we were we were getting ties together for the logging railroad. <laughs> And you've been building them out of dowels. I thought that would be easier. Well, you know what? They work really well, and the way you make them, they turn out really nice. We've also been looking for sticks that we can use, and those work reasonably well, but we found these. Right. And you can buy these. Right. Because we've probably spent two hours looking for sticks, and we haven't found more than, you know, 10 sticks that really work out well. And these we can just buy off of Amazon. And I think they would work in other scales, they too. They probably would. For other things. Anyway, that'll be next week's show. We'll, we'll be going over, because we're not sure just yet how these are going to work out. But so far, it looks like they're going to work out great as ties. Yes. They're actually pencils of all things. <laughs> yeah, you would never think of that. Well, I guess a rustic pencil. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you cut them down and do a little modification from the pencils and... What you have is a really nice looking log. That's, yes. That's about a quarter of an inch in diameter. Perfect. And we also got some long ties uh, for laying in the switch. Now we also ordered some rail. What a way to ship that though. I stepped out the door and saw that and I ran right back in again. Yeah, it looks uh, a, a big long piece of pipe with sealed caps on uh, on either end, especially these days. Yes. <laughs> uh, not, uh, anyway, we bought four rails from Lagos Creek and this is how they chose to ship them. We also bought a bundle of eight rails from microengineering through our favorite hobby shop, our local hobby shop, uh, the train shop. The train shop. And, uh, and I wanted to try using this as a didgeridoo. Right, I mean, it has multi-purposes, I'm sure. <laughs> Enough of that screwing around. Let's get back to some real screwing oh around. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to uh, take all these various ties and rails and start laying out the Y switch. Now that the rails are here, I can figure out exactly where to set the frog and exactly how this is going to go together. And it looks like it's going to go together just fine. I think so. And I think these ties are going to look just fine too. Oh, I sure hope so. So so far so good. And again, next week we'll know a lot better. Now. If you've been following the show, you know that over in the switching yard engine and in the locomotive shop, we've been using actual railroad cinders from the roundhouse at Evanston. Right, it's fun. <laughs> and uh, well, I was running just a little bit low, so I said, well, let's go up to Evanston and just get some more. Oh, that's right. So that's what we did. Now this is the roundhouse at Evanston. It is. And you know, Evanston's only, what, an hour? Yeah, just about an hour about drive. About an hour drive mm -hmm. up the hill from, from our house. So it's, it's practically in our backyard. As close as we're going to get. <laughs> well, actually front yard, depending on which way you're facing. Anyway, <laughs> it's only an hour to get up here. And they've been restoring this old uh, roundhouse for years and years. And uh, slowly developing this into a railroad museum. And boy, is it coming together. It's really looking oh, neat. Oh, it is. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, they probably restored the train station about 10 years ago, um, and they've got they've got some more work to do here. Yeah, bit by bit they're getting it. Bit by bit, but one fun thing is the stuff they haven't done yet is, uh, for me, even more inspirational than the stuff they have done. Because <laughs> I'm getting all kinds of ideas here on uh, abandoned track and weeds and stuff that we want to do on both the logging railroad and uh, the lower railroad, the main line. So it's just always inspirational to come up here, but uh, also there's just cinders everywhere. You just sort of have to know where to look because uh, the cinders are just kind of on top of the dirt. Now, if you went over onto the railroad's property, it would be easy, but we don't go onto the railroad's no, property. No, we're not going there. No, we don't trespass. But if you, if you look around, you can find these kind of pockets of cinders sitting on top of the dirt. And since the dirt is a really light color, it's pretty simple to find the cinders. Right. And you just have to be careful to scoop up mostly cinders and not so much dirt. Of course, having a little bit of dirt in with the cinders is, is a grand idea because that's how cinders work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
But there's also some really cool old equipment around here and stuff that they've been stockpiling as they slowly develop this into a museum. Right. But I think there's going to come a time in the near future where this is going to be a world-class museum. I sure hope so. I think people coming down I-80 are all going to want to stop here and say, we've got to see the Evanston Railroad Museum before moving on because it's a, it's a must-see. Oh, absolutely. And it's almost there now. It really is. And because we're right on the Union Pacific Main Line from Cheyenne West, there's all kinds of interesting modern equipment hanging around here too, and that can be fun to watch. And lots of trains coming through if you're into train spotting. One of the things we spotted uh, was this locomotive. Oh, yeah, at first I didn't know what had happened. I couldn't get a picture without getting on railroad property, so this is a picture that's on the internet of the actual explosion. But a couple of days ago, this engine exploded in the canyon just below Evanston, and they've brought it up here. Yes. So we had an agenda for coming up here, and that was to see Locomotive 4420. They'd moved it up from the park near North Elementary and brought it here to the roundhouse. Yeah, it used to be in front of, like, the courthouse. Yes, I and, heard that. And then they moved it over to the park by the, the elementary school. Right. But it was the, the yard switcher here in Evanston and the shop switcher. Right. And, boy, we wanted to see it come back here, and, well, it's back here. Here it is. <laughs> they moved it. Mine. <laughs> now, they've been restoring the roundhouse here for some years. Yes. They started over with the train station, and then they went over to the back shops. And it was just a few years ago they started restoration on the actual roundhouse. And there's still a lot of work to do here. Oh, it looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> they've, they've got just a very small part of it completely finished, but all of it is somewhat finished. But they want this to live inside the roundhouse. That would be really neat. And there's been some talk of maybe getting some other locomotives inside the roundhouse here too. Oh, good. But this is the first one, and it's very appropriate since it was the shop switcher here. <laughs> now, we've climbed all over this engine and really given it the what for. Right. <laughs> But surprisingly, when you get your nose right down in it, it's actually in really good shape. Mm -hmm. You might not think so looking it over, but this is one of the most restorable locomotives I've ever seen, and that is their goal. Right. Make it run again. That'd be cool. And uh, be able to pull it out of the roundhouse and onto the turntable and just have it as a, a thing. So over here inside, look, they're prepping a spot for it. Wasn't that cool? Isn't that amazing? They've, they've dug out this inspection pit, had, which had been filled in, and uh, they're going to tie these tracks into the other tracks. It isn't even sitting on the actual roundhouse uh, tracks right now. It's up on some temporary track. But the goal is to roll it in right here and then get it running again. Wouldn't that be neat? Oh, man. And, and I'll bet they do. I'll bet they do, too. If they can do this to the roundhouse, they can make this engine run. Because, mm -hmm. like I say, there actually isn't that much wrong with the engine. I don't think. Mm -hmm. So it's a really cool little slope back tender. I like that. And uh, because it's a switcher, it's got the really nice backup light on here and three domes mm -hmm. because it's got two sand domes because it spent uh, as much time backing up as it did going forward right because of the fact that it was both the shop switcher and the art switcher here we've always enjoyed coming to the train shows up here but darn they're not doing them right now right they've, they've got one of the best train shows every summer up here right and we've always looked forward to that but you know all these train shows are canceled right now right uh, Evanston included and I don't know if they'll be able to get the show back up you know a lot depends on what happens over the next few months right and if the pandemic calms down and maybe just maybe some of these train shows can resume including this one I sure hope so in the meantime, we can come up here whenever we want. Right, we can just kind of walk around the building and, and uh, reminisce. It's funner to come to a train show, but at least we can come up here and just uh, have some fun time in Evanston because it's a fun place to come visit. It is. And it's really nice to see the progress over here and, and the fact that they've moved the engine over here, though, that is some big progress. I'm really happy about it. We had talked about it and we didn't know that that was their plan. And we just said, boy, they've really got to do that. And look, that's exactly what is. they've done. <laughs> so score, here it is, in place where it belongs. Now, they've got some really neat uh, other equipment around here, a couple of diesel engines and that sort of thing. Right. A wrecking crane. 
but uh, I've heard discussion of two other steam engines that wow. may someday, keep your fingers crossed, they may actually get more steam engines up here than just this one. But if it ends up just being 4420, right. well, that's fine, because it's got oh. deep history here. Oh, no kidding. This is the shop switcher. Now they really don't have any place around here that they could run these these trains to. Right, unless they ran it say down to Depot Square or something. Well, or... now wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Because there's track all the way down there. It just there is. Take some cooperation with the Union Pacific, but that'd really be fun to be able to ride this little locomotive down to Depot Square and back. Right, this little historic ride. Yeah, just I mean it's only down there half a mile or so, but it'd still be really neat. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. It would be. Well, that was a fun day out. Oh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> we do this quite often, just run up to Evanston because, like, like we said, it's just in our backyard. Up the road. <laughs> yeah, and we can pop right back down here after spending a couple hours up there grabbing a meal and heading right back to Salt Lake City. Exactly. Because it's just right here, right now. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, please pop over to the channel and you can binge watch and uh -huh. of course what we'd love you to do is to subscribe absolutely and the easy way to subscribe is with the blue button are we ready for that here it comes zoink there it is there it is well we're not sure how you found this video on the internet we hope you didn't find it boring because we didn't find it boring. no we, not at all <laughs> we had a wonderful day yes. in evanston and we will see you here on tuesday <laughs>